Hey guys, want to get faster in Pro Tools? Okay, so keyboard shortcuts are super important to learn in Pro Tools, especially if you want to work as an audio engineer professionally. They save you a lot of time by speeding up your workflow and they definitely impress clients. If you're trying to learn more shortcuts in Pro Tools, I recommend Googling it. I know, really helpful suggestion, right? Or you can go to the help menu within Pro Tools and access the Pro Tools shortcuts guide that Avid makes available. Cool, so with that said, let's jump into some of my favorite shortcuts. So shortcuts that I consider particularly useful or that I use all of the time. Some of these will definitely be way too basic for some of you guys, and I apologize for that. But I'll make a list of useful shortcuts that are less well known at some point. Today is for beginners. So if you're new to Pro Tools, you might find this episode very useful. Before we really get started, I wanted to let you guys know that I have the silicone keyboard cover on my computer that I highly recommend, especially if you're working on learning Pro Tools shortcuts. I'm always trying to learn new ones. They have different versions for different keyboard sizes, and they show you shortcuts that are specific to Pro Tools. It really helps you quickly remember your shortcuts while you're working, so you don't have to stop your workflow to look something up. I really can't recommend one of these enough. So I'll put a link in the description below for you guys in case you're interested in getting one. There are also sticker versions as well, but I like the silicone ones because they feel cool. And as a bonus, if you spill a little bit of a drink on the keyboard, it isn't necessarily going to seep into your computer at the keys since it covers some of those points where water can just fall into the computer. And I once spilled an entire vodka soda on my MacBook Pro, so I like anything that prevents that kind of damage. Okay, so my first shortcut is probably the most obvious one, and that's the fact that you can switch between the mix and edit window by holding command and pressing the enter key. Duh. Everyone that uses Pro Tools can't live without that one, no matter what you're working on. Second is that if you have keyboard commands focus mode on, you can just hit the B key on your keyboard to make a break point. So B to break. If for some odd reason you don't like using keyboard commands focus mode, you can always hold command and hit the E key for the same effect. I guess the third one I'll talk about today is that you can switch between edit modes using their F key shortcuts. So the F1 key is shuffle mode, the F2 key is slip mode, the F3 key is spot mode, and the F4 key is grid mode. It's a lot faster to use the F keys once you get used to them. Fourth, we might as well talk about using the F keys to switch between edit tools. So just like with the edit modes, you can select your edit tools using the F keys. So the F5 key through the F10 key are all keyboard shortcuts for the different edit tools. And they go in the same order that you see them from left to right along the top of your edit window. So F5 is the zoom tool, F6 is the trimmer, F7 is the selector, F8 is the grabber, F9 is the scrubber, and F10 is the pencil. Which reminds me, do any of you guys really use the scrubber? And if so, what do you use it for? Let me know in the comments. Anyway, you can just hit the F key for the tool you want, or if you want the smart tool, you can just hit any two keys that correspond to any two of the individual tools that make up the smart tool. So I can hit F6 and F7 at the same time to get the smart tool, since the trimmer and selector are both part of the smart tool. I could also hit F7 and F8 for the selector and grabber at the same time to activate the smart tool, or F6 and F8. The other thing about these F key shortcuts is that if the tool has multiple options or subtypes, you can hit the F key for that tool repeatedly to toggle between the different options. So for example, the trimmer tool has the normal trimmer option, but if you click and hold on the trim tool icon, you can see that there's also the TCE trimmer, which is a time compression and expansion trimmer, and the loop trimmer. So if you want one of those, you can hit the F6 key repeatedly to toggle between those options until you land on the one you want. Okay, and for the fifth one, we're gonna talk about zooming. I use this constantly. Just like with the B to break command, there's a shorter shortcut for this that's only active when keyboard commands focus mode is on and a longer shortcut that works all the time. So the longer shortcut to zoom in and out is to hold the command keys and press the bracket keys. This works all the time. The shorter shortcut that's only active when keyboard commands focus mode is on is to use the R and T keys to zoom in and out. And that's it. I like to use the shortcut to navigate around a lot, and I take advantage of the fact that Pro Tools will zoom in on wherever your cursor is located. So I'll click with the selector tool to drop my cursor where I want to zoom in, and then I'll zoom on in. And when I want to navigate around, I'll often zoom out, click to drop the cursor, and then zoom in really quickly. Also, if you use the grabber tool to select a clip, Pro Tools will usually zoom into the beginning of whatever region is highlighted, so you can take advantage of that as well. 
The only exception to that seems to be that if you click to highlight a clip, but only the end of the clip is visible, it will zoom to the end of the clip instead. Okay, and as a final bonus shortcut, you can use the Enter key to quickly return to the beginning of your session. I often use this in conjunction with Spacebar to quickly return to the top of the piece and then hit Spacebar to play. I also use this pretty frequently to highlight a whole piece to be bounced out. To do that, I just place my cursor or highlight so that it's at the end of what I want to bounce, and then I hold Shift and then hit Enter to highlight from there to the beginning of my session. So Shift makes sure it's a highlight from where the cursor is to where I bring it, and Enter brings it to the beginning. So that's it. I really wish I could go into more shortcuts because there are so many good ones, but that will have to be for another day. I hope you guys liked this video and please let me know what you think in the comments below. For today's question, I wanna know what are some keyboard shortcuts in Pro Tools that you couldn't live without? I'm always looking to improve my workflow, so please leave your answers in the comments below. So thanks guys. As usual, if you like this video, please watch my other videos or check out my Patreon. I'll be coming out with new videos every other Wednesday and thanks for watching. Okay. Okay, so one night I was working and I made a drink and it was my first drink for the night and I wasn't even drunk so I didn't even have that excuse and I went to pick up my computer, I believe, or I I bumped something but I had I had the drink on a thick coaster and the drink was one of those round cups and so basically the bottom part of the cup got tipped and then the cup tipped over and it was a full vodka soda just fell on my computer keyboard and it just started seeping into the computer and I immediately just started screaming and I picked up my computer and held it sideways and it was just like dripping out of the computer and it was the worst. So um, what I did was I grabbed a bunch of a uh, bag of rice and I, I opened up the computer and I just dumped the rice on the top of the on top of the computer. So it's like I took the MacBook, flipped it upside down, opened up the bottom panel and then I poured a bunch of rice over it and then I put the whole thing in the bag of rice. And um, I called Apple and what they told me to do was to take it out of the rice and then to clean it with the uh, Lysol wipes. Lysol wipes. They told me to clean it with Lysol wipes. I basically called to confirm that the warranty was void and they were like, yeah, definitely void. So um, they told me to clean it with Lysol wipes and I was like, huh, okay, that doesn't sound right. And then I just hung up and I mean, I, I said bye or whatever, but anyway, I hung up, I called my little brother who, uh, he went to Worcester Polytechnic, so he's like a big tech nerd. And I called him and I was like, this doesn't sound right to me. Uh, should I clean it with Lysol wipes? And he was like, definitely not. That's gonna leave a whole bunch of residue. Don't do that. And so he had me wait, you know, I waited a few days. I waited longer than you needed to. And then he had me clean it with uh, lint-free something or other and uh, rubbing alcohol. And I did that, I cleaned the computer super thoroughly, I put it back together, I turned it on, and it worked. And I used it for years after that, years. So I spilled a full vodka soda on a MacBook Pro and somehow managed to have it work for years after that. And actually, my, it still works because uh, one of my friends has it. So I gave it to one of my friends. Uh, so basically, moral of the story is um, do not listen to what Apple tells you to do. <laughs>